The North Cascades are full of majestic mountains with hanging glaciers and sweeping views. But Robin Codner goes in search of the exact opposite. Come on, this way. She is seeking the truly tiny. Aha, here we go. Jackpot. Here's a little patch of pink, and it's definitely pink. Harvey, oh, thank you. Lay down. Those pink and red patches you've hiked by in the summer, they're not somebody's spilled watermelon snow cone. They're not paint. They're not blood. They are actually a thriving community of algae. And the reason that I was encountering the snow algae in the first place is I was out climbing a mountain because I love climbing mountains. And so I feel pretty connected to this environment. Oh, yeah, it's pink up here. We might like to think of snow as pure water. But it really contains a micro-menagerie of algae, bacteria, fungi, and other critters that have the amazing ability to grow in freezing environments. The thing is, we don't know much about snow algae or its role in the alpine landscape. This way. So for Robin, it's the perfect opportunity to marry her love of the mountains with her love of microbiology. I like to study systems where we basically don't know anything and there's every question is out there. Robin's research takes her to mountains around the world. But on a gray July day, she takes us out to her primary laboratory, the snowy wonderland surrounding Mount Baker. There's a lot of students at Western Washington University that are interested in the mountains. And so I like to provide an opportunity for any student that's interested to be able to learn how to do science in the mountains as well. There's some actually quite bright pink. This is good. Cool. And then notebook. Boom. So then you take off the cap and scoop with the cap into the tube. Nice. South Shore. Thanks to advances in field microscopes, we don't even have to head back to the lab to get a good look at our colorful quarry. Such a great image. Every single sample, when I look at it, I get excited. I'm like, ooh, what's going to be in there? Because you never exactly know what's going to be in the sample. So it's like a little mystery each time, kind of like opening a present. In a single drop of water, there's an entire cast of algal species acting out a microdrama of transformation. They start out small and green. See that swimming? As they develop, they grow whip-like flagella to move about. Oh, whoa. You can see it? Okay, let's take a video of this. These guys are all swimming. And they acquire the red pigment we know them by. And it is a pigment that helps serve two purposes within the cell. One, it kind of is natural sunscreen. It also acts as an antioxidant. The pigment is called astaxanthin. Beyond being fun to say, it's the same thing that makes seafood like salmon and shrimp pink. Here in the mountains, it has earned the algae the nickname watermelon snow. Some folks even say it tastes like watermelon. Although be warned, other microbes in the snow may have a laxative effect. So this is really interesting here because see how the snow is just melting? So these algae, their habitat is going away. You can see little spores. Uh that are right on so it's about to melt and directly adjacent are spores on rocks. So this area here is this like natural experiment where we can see the evolution of the snowpack and hopefully we'll be able to see the different stages of the algal life cycle as it responds to the changes in the snowpack. Robin is driven by all the things we don't know about snow algae. Like where does it go when the snow melts? How does it get back on the snow? And what causes it to bloom? It'd be really interesting to know if these guys These might not seem like big questions. Until you consider new research that shows that algae can speed up how fast snowpacks and glaciers melt. The maximum amount of algal bloom, there was an increase in 17% more melt than without the algae. So it can be a really substantial um, impact. To stress the point locally, the Lower Curtis Glacier hangs across the valley from where we've been collecting. Just since Robin became interested in snow algae in 2007, the glacier has retreated some 400 feet. And glaciers across the region are disappearing just as fast. So it's paramount we understand anything that might play a role 
even if it's just a tiny microbe. But there are only so many mountains Robin and her team can climb a year. So she decided to ask for help. And we realized that we had this resource in the outdoor recreation community and all of the hikers and climbers and backcountry skiers in our region that could assist in helping us collect samples and make observations of snow algae. So she started mailing out kits and set up an app called the Living Snow Project. Now, anytime anyone sees watermelon snow in the mountains, even if they don't have a sampling kit, they can log in and enter their coordinates. And, of course, tag it on Instagram. The Living Snow Project now gets samples and data from hundreds of nature lovers. Or TL, what were you calling them, TL? Yeah. All right, well, let's look at that one. What do you think's going to be in here? Each slide reveals how little we know about life at this scale. Oh, that's nice. I like that. This is a snow fungi. Whoa, what's no, going on there? Just... Oh, weird. Who is that guy? It can be really difficult to identify these things just by their morphology. DNA is what would help us say whether or not this is the same as this and this just hasn't, the cell hasn't. It have its pigment yet. Yeah, exactly. So Robin is using modern methods to sequence the DNA I of every species, species in the samples. That's new. Oh, look at that. It becomes a big data question. With the goal of not only finding new it's species. This guy. This species is the one that I know now is a unique species to the Pacific Northwest. But also figuring out how they all interact with each other and their alpine environment. I think in general, studying microbial eukaryotes and algae, I think, are some of the most beautiful of all of those. Help us realize that like there's so much amazing diversity out there that I think is really invisible to us when we're focused so much on the sort of charismatic big things like mammals and flowering plants. Especially when the health of big things like glaciers might depend in part on a microscopic world we are just learning to see.